Okay. I think we're we should be live. Um, okay. Testing. Hello. Gonna make sure the audio works fine. Can I get a audio check in the chat, making sure everyone can hear us? One two one two. One two one two. Uh, I think yeah, I think it's good to go. All right, so. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Ahmed al -Duri. As you know, this is um, the live stream for the XP Pen giveaway, and I'll be talking about that shortly uh, in terms of how to enter the giveaway. And, oh, of course, there's <laughs> every Wednesday, I should have remembered this, there's a sirens test. I don't know if you can hear that um, a little bit. Yeah. Tiny bit. Okay. Probably not. Anyway, um, so I'll be posting that. I am joined today by my really good friends who I met in Scotland, Glasgow. They showed me a very great time and hosted me for a while. Um, we have William McLaugh McLaughlin and Russell yes. McEwen, um, very much in the comic art, comic world for comics and storytelling, writing, and they have different backgrounds and it was really great to get to know them. So if you guys want to just introduce yourselves, uh, William, we can start with you. This is William. Hello. <laughs> um, so... I, my background in kind of visual storytelling, I guess, is mainly film. Uh, I've done a lot of locations, filmmaking, indie stuff. Um, for a long time, I was quite interested in photography. And more recently, I've been, in the last two, three years, doing a ton of drawing, and I've started making comics. Um, and that's kind of how I met Russell. Mm -hmm. I'd set up, a, my background is primarily fine art, visual art to begin with. And then I'd set up a, a comic drawing course in Glasgow and William came along and he came back again, which I thought was a good sign to the next course and maybe even a third. And then I thought, well, there's a good chance that he's, he's dead keen to actually work on stuff. And I had a few things in the background, like the, the Helen Stalingrad, but really it was, it was still kind of bubbling away. I was, I was developing it personally, working on it quite a lot, but keeping it to myself mostly. And that was working with uh, two writers, Rob Jones from Madius and Matthew Hardy from Mad Robot as well. But it was really Rob who had pitched the idea to me to, at a Glasgow Comic Con a couple of years ago. So before the lockdown, well before the lockdown. And mm. as it just turned out, I said yes, and it was cool. But then I got like a new job with animation in, in Glasgow with the, the city of Glasgow College. And I had to develop a bunch of courses and things for a while. So that took about a year and things. And then when it got to the lockdown this year, we were at that kind of point where like Rob had said, let me develop it for a while. And then I got to that point where I had to kind of go, do I want to proceed with this? Because I knew it was going to be a huge undertaking, really. Mm. And I didn't want to take it on and, and not complete it for, mm. for Rob and Matt. Yeah, really. of course. And then I had like a brilliant idea about asking <laughs> William if he would join in with me. And I think that was, that was the key for me that to actually get someone who was equally interested had a had a visual background in filmmaking and we could we could talk essentially and there was yeah. long periods where we weren't allowed to actually uh, enter each other's houses and things like that so right. but what that meant was i would drop off some pencils some pencil art on paper in the beginning and william would scan it and do some inking and get it back to me digitally at night and it had such a nice kind of I to, to, yeah, I, I, had to, yeah. I had to do my, my part of it, get it to William, we went out for a walk, got some coffee, he inked in the afternoon and got it back to me at night and then I processed it and, and on. Amazing. And really amazing process because we did maybe three months without a break after that once we got into the, the zone of it to the extent where we almost worked too hard, I think. <laughs> we, needed, we got to that point where we just had to stop, just had to uh, take yeah. a break and make it a bit more, a bit more standard because it wasn't necessary to be quite so intensive but i think it we needed that at the start yeah we, yeah we, to kick start it, it yeah to, uh -huh. to, to me, certainly. we'd right. rob and matt had this, this discussed a sort of a kickstarter date a launch date for a set helen stalling because right? it also gave us a kick to get going yeah. as well and then we had we had different levels of kind of deadline for ourselves and and we went into quite a lot of promotion type things as well where we'd, we'd document our process and talk about it and produce those in a day as well. So we would right thumbnail a specific part of the script, and then take take everyone through the through the process. And that's also great for conceiving and and talking about your process because otherwise it can be quite internal. You know, I mean, and I'm trying to get it across to to William the way that I work, and that, the way that I work over this this period has been quite 
quite varied. So we've had different different days of different methods, and full lockdown sometimes meant that we had to work fully digital, for example, so that right. I could get higher up quality artwork to William. And I'm I'm and really and we couldn't do the, the physical, you know. Yeah, I'm definitely very curious, and I want to dive into the process, like the, you know, the sketching and the inking, and uh -huh. that was really interesting. And I do I want to share uh, on screen what your what the Helen Stalingrad looks like, um, uh -huh. and I, I might have might have some questions. And if there's any questions in the chat, feel free to ask. Um, but before that, I do want to actually talk a little bit about the giveaway. Get that out of the way, then we'll jump right into the comics. Um, all right. So uh, real quick, so for the giveaway, I'll be updating the description. In the uh, below the thing, uh, there will be a link. So let me just edit that right now. Um, and it will be for the XP pen giveaway. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and hit save, and it should update. So you should be able to see now a. Actually, I can just share my screen. Um. A link uh, where it says how to enter the XP Pen giveaway. Uh, you have to subscribe to the XP Pen channel and you enter the raffle by following Rafflecopter and then following the instructions there. Unfortunately, the, if you want to apply, you cannot, uh, the, the prize can't be shipped to the Middle East, Africa, South America, Mexico, or South Asia. Sorry about that. That's just what they told me. Um, and once the raffle is done, uh, we will randomly select, uh, the raffle will select the winner and will be contacted contacted by me or XP pen for shipping information. Uh, I'm keeping my um, my XP pen because it's really, really great actually. And if you've seen my review, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. They will be sending a new one to whoever the winner is. So uh, if, if one of the mods can pin that uh, link to the chat, that would be very, very kind of you. So um, Make sure you uh, fill that out, and let's get back to our discussion about Helen Stalingrad. So I'm going to go ahead and actually pull that up on my screen, um, and so we can kind of show the audience what, what, what we're talking about. Because when I was hanging out with you guys in Glasgow, um, we uh, we got to like kind of just sit together and sketch a lot, mm -hmm. and we, we had this really fun time where you would grab a random magazine or newspaper and cut out yeah. random parts, and we would sketch them and make a story about it. So. Um, the creative process is kind of we all over the place. Macerated cauliflower. Yeah, we live in the West End of Glasgow, and it's one of the more kind of aspirational areas of Glasgow in terms of all manner of different ways that they're aspirational. But one of them was that there's going to be a, a shortage of cauliflower <laughs> for a while. You know, these are the kind of fears that we have in the West. So we thought that was perfect, and we would buy up all of the all of the the supplies of cauliflower and macerate them. Yeah. So that became the title of the of the the sort of comic exercise. So you basically take yourself to a cafe and find the most banal magazine. Yeah. Like lifestyle insert from a newspaper. Or yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's got photographs in it of things like insurance policies or uh -huh. chooses or whatever mundane stuff it is. Yeah. And you, you take like 10 minutes and just draw a panel from it. So you've, you've got your reference in front of you and you just do that. And then we take six chance pieces of text and lay them in and make them into a comic later on. So it's a nice way of just breaking through if you get a bit stuck for ideas and things like that. Mm. But the cut up text is a wee bit like maybe William Burroughs or something like that. That's my influence or maybe David Bowie kind of thing. He used to do uh, like that kind of cut up chance uh, type thing. Yeah, so that's that's what we did with that one. Yeah. So if you could see my screen. Uh, this is kind of the power of the non sequitur mm -hmm. stuff as well, where you get amazing, sometimes emotional coincidence between, mm -hmm. you know, a headline and a, and a banal image. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And that was also with our friend Brian, Brian Combe. We should mention Brian because he was mm -hmm. there with the sort of the early days of maceration. maceration. And, and then Apid yourself. So that, yeah. was, that was pretty good fun because. I think it's, it's cool to go to cafes, but I find myself getting a bit mm. twitchy if I'm not actually sitting drawing or something like that. Right. Uh, yeah, it was really fun to hang out with you guys and draw. God, I really miss Scotland. Like, every time I walk around here, it looks so boring. Like, uh, <laughs> here in America, sure, it's, it's, it's nice. What was, your, and... what was your favorite part of being in Glasgow? Oh, man, it was... Uh... Man, I should just pull up some videos just of us walking through. It, it was just walking around... Um... 
and and going from you know the train i guess i was in the western part going more east i don't remember but uh you know seeing the architecture the the bricks the the old castle like quality of everything and yeah it's, um, it's ancient in some respects isn't it there's that but also how absolutely nice and welcoming everyone there was like i, I didn't have a single bad experience um Unlike other places in Europe, I was in <laughs> prior to that. The yeah. girl in the chip shop, she liked you. Uh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> the guy didn't so much. Uh, yeah. Work, yeah, he was quite into that afterwards. Uh-huh. Right. That um, was a, a far superior portion of fish and chips than you would normally get. So uh-huh. it was good. Because well, yeah. like, they must have known you were visiting sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. That'll do. Let's get a really good one for him. Yeah. <laughs> A quick shout out to Jonathan Liddell or Lydell. I actually always yeah, I think he's yeah. online at the moment. Eh? He's, he's yeah, he's he's in the yeah, chat. chat um, was so. Great. Yeah, that was, well, that was the purpose for you coming to Glasgow was the the drink and draw that we had, mm. and it was it was pretty good. You know, and a real right on. Good mix of, of people at different levels and ages and things like that, different backgrounds and stuff. So post COVID, I'm hoping that we can do it again. Absolutely. One of the things that I enjoy most. William and I actually have quite a, a, like a social, creative week kind of thing. But it's not until people maybe join you at a drink and draw, you realise that they are actually drawing solo, like almost most, all the time. Yeah, yeah, almost all kind of thing. So it's, it, it lends itself to that as well. If you're an illustrator, that is the, probably the ideal way of working and things like that. But I'm, I think my background is music, really like extreme metal. And I'm used to collaborating with people, so I think that's that's slowly, slowly came back into how how I needed to work. And like I say, once I got William on board, I'd already been collaborating with, with Rob and Matt. Yeah. And once I got William on board, I think that's when it, it truly kind of like kicked into yeah, crystallised for yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. And, and I could like I had one person's opinion, and that was all that really mattered. Did William really get what we were going for? And if that's the case, then. That was it, because otherwise we've got the script, and that's really fantastic. But I think it's your job to take it way, way beyond the script. You know what I mean? As far as you can push it. And I wasn't yeah. able to push it satisfactorily until lockdown. And I think it was the extremity of that situation yeah. where there was genuine, yeah, was ge- oh, a pandemic, there was genuine life and death. And it's not often that you're faced with that kind of thing. You know what I mean? So we had that in there, even though personally I think we're, pretty healthy, you know what I mean, in, in reality and things, but uh, so feeding yeah. that into the, the lockdown and feeding that into the siege, basically, of, of Stalingrad, I thought it fitted, fitted so, but by no means is, is what we were experiencing anything like Stalingrad, that wasn't the point, but I think when you're in a sort of a, a fugue state mentally, then it's, it's perfect for feeding into the, into the artwork, and we ended up doing a page a day one page every 24 hours, two panels on essentially an old British commando book format. But it, it grew legs really quickly. It got beyond being <laughs> A5, this tiny wee mm. comic and things like that. They're still going. It, and it's it's obvious, and it's subject matter that really commando wouldn't handle in the it mainstream. Yeah, yeah, and also the yeah the things that happen to the characters and things are just not. But the commando book was the was the sort of uh, the influence kind of thing and. And then we just, it starts off reasonably, for me, it starts off reasonably sedate and then slowly, slowly sinks into, into madness over time. Kind of thing. So right. uh, suddenly, the, I think these are some of the early concepts and things like that. So that's cool. So let me ask, uh, for, you know. for those not, not familiar, uh, what is the storyline uh, for, for the We're whole? We're following two soldiers of a similar rank and between the German and Russian forces in December, mm-hmm. when, in actual fact, the, the German forces had made it impossible for their own tanks to enter Stalingrad and enabled the Russians to actually fight back. Mm. Because at that point, the, the German forces liked a distant tank battle and they, they'd blown Stalingrad to bits and couldn't get their own tanks in. So their own troops were actually enclosed and this siege as well kind of thing. So mm. the extremity of the situation in the story is that uh, demonic forces begin to emerge. And I think that was, that was really quite interesting. That's cool. Over time, the comic begins to embrace those demonic forces as well. And it just suddenly 
it felt like I wasn't really drawing it anymore. It felt like it was kind of drawing itself in a way after all of those like couple of years of development, really, you know, quite kind of stagnation or something like that. Inertia, that's the word I'm looking Inertia, for. Inertia, yeah. Where suddenly it felt like we were in the perfect situation to be drawing this thing. Yeah, for sure. And then we started to employ different techniques as well. We did a lot of blue line and things and regular inking, and that's cool. And that's mostly applied to the human characters. But when it comes to the, the demonic forces, I, I took a different approach entirely. <laughs> yeah, there were days where Russell would like be, like send me a message and be like, after lockdown had been lifted, uh, come around, we'll have some coffee, and then we'd do like six oil paintings mm-hmm. or oh, like, wow. or whatever, uh-huh. um, and like break out like only black and white paint and paint on like card and sort of like. Uh-huh. William got us both some of this. It got me black 2.0 and bought himself black 3.0. You know? This is the cutting edge one. Uh-huh. So the blackest out. paint possible. So that Stuart Semple's uh, like materials that he's making. So we were using all this kind of like experimental approach mm. to making a comic that by this stage in the story, it's not a conventional comic any longer. No. It's something that's like, you know, changed. And I guess that was an influence not just of the script and from Matt and Rob, but also the experience of you know, being locked down. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, I mean, the, the themes are obviously the, the horror of war, but I think what I took from it was that these were the conditions that allowed a demonic force to actually feel confident to come in and begin to take over because people are already in that zone of, well, the horrors that went on in, in, the, in the Eastern Front are quite something. Mm. So a wee bit like classic horror or current horror as well, where things are so amplified, so heightened, that the horrific force can actually slip in at that moment. That's what I took from it in terms of like, we follow our opposing forces with a human face to a German and a Russian guy as they begin to take on uh, the center of this, this demonic force. I don't want to talk about the story too much, but that's that's the, the kind of, that's the sort of the journey. And we were, we travel in with Mm-hmm. with these two two men who mm-hmm. supposedly, you know I mean, opposite sides and all that kind of thing. But I don't want to give away the, the actual yeah, of course. story itself. But I think that's it was the, really the sort of, uh, for me, uh, Matt was chatting about some of the, the more experimental panels earlier on this week. And one of the things I was keen to get across was the sort of comprehensive collapse of, of the psyche, particularly one character that we know, and then the, the, the potential for for what's going on with the other characters and how you might actually capture that appearance without being Mm -hmm. a a literal illustration of it, which I know is like a bit of a departure from comic art because it is an illustrative art Mm -hmm. kind of thing. And I'm not trying to pretend that I'm, you know I mean, elevating it to anything like that at all. It's just, it's just the way that that I work kind of thing. So I think it's got a direct Linked to making music like that, you know, I mean, the sort kind of, of you've flow got some structure and you've got some improvisation kind of thing, but right. uh, and, a, and a very sort of like caveman one note type improvisation. This is this is not jazz, you know. What I mean? so, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Way, so you described it as sort was, of like. Sorry, I could. Uh, okay. The way we worked was some days painting, some days painting abstract just for shapes, and then William would maybe scan these for me and send them back to me. And I wouldn't mm. actually know what we had until maybe a wee bit later and get a chance to look at these things and then draw into them as well so that you're you're tapping into the subconscious classic kind of everything's abstract in the beginning, but you're tapping into that subconscious, unconscious mind. But I've been living that script the whole time. I can't get away from it. I can't stop dreaming about it. I can't I can't just like finish of an evening and go, That's cool, I'll do something else now. No, I'm already concept and the next page, and we did we did thumbnail like vast yeah yeah probably sections like five, of it. five iterations of every page. Mm-hmm. What was the organization like for that? The organization. Yeah, um, I imagine. It was generally, we would like do one page a day um, in terms of our production output, mm-hmm. but it was also like some sometimes it was a faster day. Other days it was like it took longer to get the page to the state that it needed to be in to be finished. Uh, on the days where it came easily, I think we did more thumbnailing than additionally, uh-huh. mm. um, because I think that's what made it like easier. I guess easier is the wrong word, but it made it more 
clear what direction to go in by doing exploratory thumbnails. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, we found things that just wouldn't work, but then mm. 10 pages later on in the future, uh, it'd be perfect. Mm -hmm. And we then have assets that have been yeah. expanded and developed in a way that then could be dropped in or, uh -huh. you know, fully realized in a drawing. Um, and there was a lot of kind of like collage and kind of like, you know, graphic manipulation mm -hmm. to create it because that's what it is. It's a total, you know, disparate sort of like smash of everything together to, to I think, uh, you know, reflect the kind of insanity of war. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I guess, especially late in the book, why just a simple line drawing wasn't having the effect that we wanted. Mm -hmm. Right. So also with this process, we were talking about this last night, the character design, the script required a demon many, many times in a row. And that wasn't the same demon that was maybe in the character sheet in the beginning. This was a subsequent demon and a subsequent demon. Now, that was my interpretation to actually take that on board as well, you know, because mm. Matt and Rob are like fantastic to work with, really. So it wasn't a case of like, oh, it has to be a certain way. If anything, they were really happy about how it, it, it developed kind of thing. And it was, I think it was reflected in the Kickstarter as well. So that was, that was encouraging for us all. It was quite exciting you know, to see it, yeah, to see it develop. And, yeah. and then we do more, mm. we offer more like digital rewards or something like that. And then there was a hardback edition and then there was the art book and things like that and some other things as well. So that's, it's been a really uh, encouraging, encouraging process like that, you know, and it's, it's a big part when you've got that kind of a reason to stay in touch with your, your audience or your emerging audience really. You know, so that's right on. Kind of thing. But Did, like I say, it was unlike film, it's hmm. such a small group of people who have to okay it. So any decision making can be everyone it's gets fast. a say. It's really fast. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to like a massive uh, a massive committee, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where maybe the idea gets diluted as time goes on, kind of thing. Did you feel uh, sorry to interrupt. Um <clears throat> because with a project like this, it's such a grand scale, uh comic books are you, you're making two dimensional art, mm -hmm. uh, unlike a film where you have to do more things to, like, you know, camera work, post processing, and all that. Uh, did you ever feel like looking back at the earlier pages, the temptation to kind of change things and update? And did you resist that? Yes. Yeah, totally. I think I mean, so. We did yeah. discuss that. Um, yeah. And uh, because of the certain nature of the story being a descent into kind of like hell, literally, and kind of psychologically. Yeah, really fit to like not go back, and I think that was quite hard in some respects. Yeah, you maybe did want to go and like <clears throat> pretend. Things. Yeah, that yeah. six months later you were the same as six months earlier, mm -hmm. kind of thing. And sometimes there was some historical stuff in there as well. But it got yeah. to a point where you're like, no, I think that needs to exist. Just as that was where we were at that moment, imperfect, really, and well, imper or perfectly imperfect in some respects, you know, because. I've got like a million influences with, with artists and things like that, but mm. even if I do some of their stuff, it's it's a pastiche of a pastiche of a pastiche rather than thinking right. What, what, what would I do in this situation, really? You know, and that's that's where the the real development comes, and that's I think that's where the real value comes for for the story because right? that's that's the the main that's the main reason we're all here is for this and you, story. You, know? you were saying that you were like thinking about it constantly, mm -hmm. uh, even when we weren't working on it. Uh, and then that coupled with all the planning that we did, like you should see Russell's script. It's just got drawings all over it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's just when he was reading the script. Uh, and then we took it to thumbnails and stuff. I think that approach allowed the actual creations of the page to be much, much faster, I think, than they would have been otherwise. Because uh -huh. we would have been having to go and redo stuff uh -huh. rather than like, mm -hmm do the first third, like then do the second third. And then that last sort of half of the whole book, I think we were even changing our approach again with that, with doing like so much thumbnailing and exploration mm -hmm. and a kind of like conceptual, like way of that entire portion of the story in one go. Mm -hmm. Ultimately the pipeline was right into Photoshop. Everything oh. ended up in Photoshop. So, regardless of traditional methods or, or drawing or painting and things like that, all had to come back in through this this funnel at the end. And I think that's the unifying mm -hmm. thing as well. The William was working fully digital as well for quite a long period. Mm -hmm. doing like your, we used to be a bit Procreate as well, which is a okay. fantastic application. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Photoshop bits of Clip Studio, if anyone's wanting to know that kind of thing. Uh, we did some screen tablet stuff. Uh, what else did we use? iPad mm -hmm. and things, as well as like regular kind of sketchbooks and things like that. You know what I mean? We're just... Right, right. Nice. I love a sketchbook. You know, I mean, I love just always having something with me and 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 being able to kind of constantly just just keep on putting ideas down. Rough as hell. I really like rough drawings. No, no, because I think it's easy to polish things. It's not so easy to, or it's it's more fun to be constantly coming up with creative ideas, and then you can you can refine for as far as you know as far as you like kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I do have an aspect of what I'm doing is is quite. Quite well rendered, I think, but with these ones, I think it's suited the story. Essentially, that's the. So it's good that you're not seeing any of the, any of the the actual pages of the, the comic very much at the moment, because I think it's mm. quite exciting to mm -hmm. to think that we're we're at the stage of it's being proofed, I believe. Mm. Uh, so we should maybe get to see some idea of what it like, what it's like. It's quite exciting. Quite exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I look forward to flipping yeah. through it. Yeah. We'll send you a copy. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I still have your Black Sun and Black Sun Two books oh, here that yeah, I yeah, flip yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's it's so cool to see this because you know, comic book the comic book industry is kind of up and down depending on where you're looking. You know, Marvel, DC, they kind of got their weird stuff going on. It seems like the indie creators are are really having the freedom to do their own thing and tell their own stories. I don't know if you saw Berserker, the Keanu Reeves thing. Mm -hmm. um, I backed that like immediately. It's so cool because. There's no bureaucracy there. It's just this is our story. This is uh -huh. what we're doing. Um, so uh, you know, glad to see that freedom kind of show itself yeah, with this. I think that, and also, the Kickstarter system is quite interesting in terms of if you make your goal, it goes ahead, yeah. and if it's not making the goal, then it's a good indication that maybe you need to think of another idea. Yeah. You know, yeah, just keep going. But I think it's a, it's a long term gig doing this kind yeah. of thing. So it's cool to have something like this. But we're already thinking about the future. You know, I mean, we're already working on something else. Yeah, because mm. so and it's all quite rough. It's all super rough and unfinished. But it's good to still have a reason to come and hang out and do days of, of drawing and things like that, and, and keep on. Well, William mentioned assets, creating assets, and once mm. they're scanned in, we we consider them all digital assets for that point where we can. We don't know where they're going to be used no. quite at that moment, but. Now and again, the script requires something, and you kind of flip back through your own memory banks and think, right, what did we do? And there, there is something that we can use, you know. So I like that aspect and surprising myself with improvisation, with, with drawing, with collage, and things like that, and then refining it and drawing into it. I mean, that's my some of my favourite ways of working. Plus, it keeps it, it keeps it exciting when you're Aye. surprising yourself. You know, that's <laughs> the, I think that's one of the, the things about art and you know, doing something that you've not seen before. Even right. if it has been drawn a million times before, you know, it's still mm. it's still new, it's still great, and it's still exciting to to be pleasantly shocked by <laughs> your work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's something. Uh, were there any like major hiccups that kind of got in the way besides all the COVID stuff? But um, yeah, that... we took a break. It was really hard to start. <laughs> yeah, to talk about the break and why you needed the. Three months in a row like that was pretty much every single day mm -hmm. um and a huge amount of kind of energy going into it to try and reflect that in each page mm -hmm. uh, and i think when we stopped we had six days off and it was like mm -hmm. my whole body just kind of like relaxed and my <laughs> brain was just kind of like running at a million miles an hour so that that was probably the thing that i found really really difficult um mm -hmm. starting again after that little break that we had we did acts one and two and we we said we did what we said we'd do for for Matt and Rob and the Kickstarter, and I think that was the issue. Once we'd yeah. said we'd, we'd completed that psychologically, you needed to kind of like take take a uh -huh, yeah uh -huh. like a breather for a second. Mm -hmm. But that's where we got back into like gave it a few days and then got back into the system of painting and drawing big drawings where we were drawing large scale thumbnails, huge thumbnails just for fun kind yeah. of thing. Thumbnails on double elephant kind of. Imperial size paper and things like Double that. Double elephant. Double elephant. Yeah, it was under, under, under the wall behind us. <laughs> the only reason it's down is because it fell down because it was so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> but we made a clip about that, so mm -hmm. it's on YouTube and things. And, oh. and and that was good to just like do everything that you're not meant to do. You know how mm. you get these rules of art? Rules, yeah. right. There we go. There we go. Exactly. Guidelines. Exactly. Yeah, it's just a just a suggestion. So we did everything absolutely that you're not meant to do as far as like, my training has been. You know, so 
and that's cool because that's a nice hypocrisy for my students. That's <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it's, you know, I mean, everyone needs to learn some, some key basic skills and then down the line you decide if you want to use them ever again. Kind of. mm-hmm. so, Great. Yeah. And that's, that's so cool. Um, man, you mentioned that there's, these are not what the final panels look well, like. Very early in some, in some cases, but that's fine. That's yeah. Awesome. I mean, I like a, a bit of an indication, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's fine to wait until you get the actual beast. Mm. I think, you know, so it'll still be recognizable, but I think it's, it's nice to see where I was at that point. And Even if it was just this, I think it's brilliant. It's, uh, Thanks, the style is great. I love it. It's like that old school classic kind of gritty ink, kind of just rough. Oh, binary. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. And have you been working on some comic ideas as well? <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> I got some projects kind of like floating around. I'm collaborating with uh, some friends on, on some ideas, but not for comics, but rather potential uh, indie games, especially okay. with uh, Unreal Engine and Unity being much more accessible uh you know pulling off a, a good story is is much easier uh, still hard you know still takes a lot of work mm-hmm. um but you know that's that's kind of really inspiring um i think once i left the studio life maybe four or five years ago because i don't i didn't like being in a box um yeah. nowadays it's like the thing that really motivates me is just collaborating with people and as you guys know you know, I think if you didn't enjoy collaborating with each other, this this wouldn't have happened. No, uh, no. right. And I, you know, and so right now, it's that, not like a kind of a quick weekend job. Oh no! Even if you don't get on, you know, well, yeah, that's a pity, but it'll be over soon. Yeah, I don't think you would take on the mm-hmm. six months, eight right. months projects if you're not at least aware that you can actually communicate with each other. You know? Oh yeah, so, yeah. I like sure. to say. Rob and Matt were great to work with. William was cool to work with as well. So it was, it was dead easy, really. We were fortunate in that respect, you know. So mm-hmm. we'll see what happens with the future and with the four of us. I know. think you've got to be kind of like, you've got to have a good perspective. And I think the most important thing if you're collaborating with somebody, certainly in a comic, is you've got to serve the story in the comic. Yeah. You can't worry about, you know, getting your own ego uh, drawing in the book or anything. So there were things that I did that were just fun, that, that didn't fit or didn't work or there was an alternative that was better uh, and I was just delighted that I was producing you know the work to submit to then get like you know that one's not going to work um, and there is tons of stuff that I did that got in um, but I think that that's one of the key things is that to do that kind of like three or four months solid uh, you can't, I couldn't have been like getting my nose out of joint because something mm-hmm. didn't make it in that would have been totally toxic. <clears throat> but no, nothing was really guaranteed to go. Nothing was precious. No, was you know what I mean? Nothing was, was so, yeah, nothing was so mm. precious that it had to be mine or it had to be, you know what I mean? Something that I'd concepted and held in my mind for long enough. If it didn't work, it, it didn't go in. Now, right. A lot of times, the straight up kind of, this is, this is, the panel descriptions were quite, kind of, quite overt and things like that. So you had to do an element of that. But I think, if you if you stay open to ideas, so it's like a ton of thumbnails and a, a ton of whatever you require to, yeah. to inspire you, then then that's fine because I and I drew things that I'd, I'd not planned whatsoever. You know what I mean, and that's the whole that's the whole reason for it. You know what I mean? And like I say, it, 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 it took on a life of its own, really, and it's it's changed us. It's changed us as artists now where that's where we now work in that method. Mm. So we're working on some personal stuff and those methods begin to have begun to sort of emerge again, really, even yeah. though we went in with, we will just draw with Sharpie markers today and <laughs> yeah. draw this, this comic. And, and it just didn't quite work out. Like, like, oh no, we need to, we need to do a go back to sound, uh, regular method of working and things like that. So it's, it's cool. You know, it's good to, to get to that point, and I think that the the theme it's the theme of the the story that's that's most prevalent to me. The sense of loss, the yeah. the untimely loss already. Everyone has lost. You know, a wee bit like sort of like art of war kind of thing. If you sure. actually go to war, you've lost. You know, what I mean that kind of thing, and yeah. we know that. The events in, in Stalingrad were already, you know, I mean, unbelievably, unbelievably gone. So 
loss of uh, humanity. And I think that's where fantasy art comes into things like these themes. And that's where fantasy art has some real weight as well. Mm. So obviously you get your kind of other, other, other forms of fantasy art exist. But for me, it's, it's the degradation of the human allowing the, the circumstances for the demonic force to even be seen. So these guys could suddenly, as well, well, we know in, the, in these stories it tends to be quite overt. You actually can see the, mm-hmm. the, the demonic yeah, presence. Right. You know, but this is, that was the thing that really appealed to me. One of the things I thought was cool when they were making the, the comic um, and like drawing it was the development of the demons. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about that? Well, one of the themes was, was crucifixion. So obviously that's, that's an ancient ancient thing. And uh, I actually took a note of this one. It was, it was a sort of a Francis Bacon thing as well, where he mentioned that the crucifix is a fantastic armature in which to hang all manner of uh, human emotions and sensations. And I thought that's quite an interesting link for me. So Bacon is, is one of my one of my influences. I actually dislike Francis's painting intensely. Uh, <laughs> but it, 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 it provokes me in ways mm-hmm. that I, I just I just can't get from anything like that, you know? And so there's there's a crucifixion scene in the in the story as well where one of our characters is we just thought that any any demonic force would automatically they would blaspheme as much as possible because they can, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So they were having a, a blasphemy of, of a crucifixion and things like that, you know? So that's the, the sort of level of quite intelligent demonic forces as well as maybe some of more of the, your kind of lower echelon type. Mm-hmm. There seems to be a question on the screen if you guys want to take that for you. From Jonathan? Uh, we... William and said yes Russell. to it, and then launched the. I think it's Jonathan. Uh, we said yes to it. Said yes to the the Kickstarter. Then decided to get stuck in. <laughs> to get stuck in. Yeah, we would drawn like the first act in like roughs and thumbnails and things like that. But but yeah, we say we did what we said we never do. <laughs> and uh, but I think it was the only way that we could actually get the kind of like crazy motivation to to keep on going with it kind of thing. It would have been nice to have had drawn. The entire comic and then sit back yeah. and afterwards. Yeah, lovely. But uh, just like everyone else in life, you know, I mean, anything that doesn't like drive you half insane and most of the way to suicide hardly seems worthwhile. You know? So, mm. yeah, I mean, I think as well, like when we kind of got to the stage when the Kickstarter was wrapping up, I think we just definitely had like we missed it because it was really exciting. It obviously, we generated a huge amount of money, um, mm. and I think we none of us really expected to like hit that kind of total otherwise mm-hmm. the target would have been higher mm-hmm. um, so I think that was extremely exciting mm-hmm. and then um, it sort of finished and I guess mm-hmm. now each stage has its own excitement now the next exciting thing is seeing the proof where we actually get physical proof oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it would be amazing um, but yeah like just uh-huh. fired getting that initial little bit to do the kickstarter with didn't it? I think it's called fear really that's mm-hmm. the yeah that. Ingredient. <laughs> that's good to hear. Fear of failure, you know. I mean, after uh, so that's that's always a good one to you know, certainly for me to like. Oh yeah, we need to just keep on keep on going with this, and it's a it's a campaign as well. So there's another parallel to the story. We have a campaign with our soldiers heading into, into Stalingrad, and we have a, our own personal Helengrad to, mm-hmm. to deal with as well. So. For sure. Yeah. Uh, question. Um, Going back to the, the 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 story, we got the demons, the the crucifixion, all this kind of visual imagery. The demons and such. Do you feel that that might be an allegory to, you know, uh, kind of the demons that we have and harbor that become uh, something? So, mm-hmm. in, in a sort, it's a metaphor for the yeah. evils that come out. Mm-hmm. Manifestation of of how those armies were with each other at that, yeah. that point. It was so unbelievably brutal between the two armies. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's a manifestation of really, and I'm sure Rob and Matt could give you a bit more of their interpretation behind it, but that's, it. But, that's, but that's fine, because we've, we've got the text for that one. But I think it's it's really the, the job of the artist to imagine it for 
the story wholesale, you know what I mean, and, and take it much further, much more extreme, unbelievably extreme. So it's good that we're not seeing any of it at the moment. So mm. some of you, you know what I mean, just be prepared. Just be prepared. <laughs> right on. Are you drawing right now? We are drawing. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> the comic right now, live. No, it's all done. It's all it's all finished. So yeah. don't worry, anyone who's who's worried, we're we're, we're all can, finished. Really, can, it's, it's ready to get printed. About the uh, oh, drawing, um, I think it's worth mentioning is that the format Russell had already said was generally two panels a page, though sometimes that changes. So mm -hmm. it was something like 130 drawings, but then to get to that, I think it was like six or seven hundred. Yeah. Yeah. With all the thumbnails, all the character concept design, um, going through different iterations of pages and stuff, right. ended up being even more than I think is reflected in the actual page uh -huh. book, which is quite cool. That's not something I learned so much um, in terms of like what goes into comics production just on this project mm. that I would never have learned any other way. So that was quite cool. Absolutely. Uh, let me just actually bring you... Uh... I gotta get used to using this thing. Um, so, uh, uh, do you want to show us what you're drawing on your little sketchbooks? Yeah. <laughs> so we just do kind of constant. I'm doing some heads. Nice. Oh yeah, you you, you did the meds heads challenge, or you keep going. Yeah, well, I'm nice. not doing that many at the moment. We've got uh, Michael Caine, uh huh, Kate Lavinia, uh huh, Donald Trump, uh huh, uh, Melania, yeah, Keeper Sutherland, oh, okay, um, friend Keith Isles, nice, uh, Joe Biden. Been here, and that's meant to be Robert Pattinson, but I'm not gonna. Okay, <laughs> is that a pepper up top? What's with yeah, even peppers these days? Yeah. The chili from yesterday as well. But the why? <laughs> a wee bit like the demonic paintings. I went oh. to the Glasgow Necropolis, which is yeah. our ancient graveyard, and I got some brambles, some blackberries. Oh, no kidding! Made some paintings in the so I've got some graveyard brambles, and then I sealed them later on, kind of thing. They started off bright red. And then became this this gorgeous, this gorgeous uh, deep purple kind of thing. That's so really cool. and then, but we're not doing this sort of thing. We go to the studio with some pals. There's just a small group of us, and we mm. draw each other clothed. Yep. In case anyone's wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minute poses and things like that. So that's the guys from the, the Hidden Lane. Uh, yeah, so we got here. See if I can find the volume. I've got some uh, sound ad, but should I not show that? I think we should keep it, yeah. Okay. So there's William from a couple of weeks ago before he had his hair cut. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that was, that was pretty good fun. Just sort of 10 minutes and things. William will take over. Got some, some Russell there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wearing some glasses. I love seeing myself. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, that Superman thing for you. Okay. Some primitive forms right on. Yeah, I love all that stuff. I just do it perpetually. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at those thumbnails. Okay. I you know what that is. Oh, that is stuff for portfolio submission. That's uh, the opening scene from Arrow, the TV show. Okay. Perpetual heads. Ooh. You know how people talk about like do 100 heads and things like that? What about yeah. 10,000 heads? You know? 10,000. Let's go, dude. Yeah, like you know, not in a month or anything like that. Just you never have yeah. a day. That, without, doing, without doing heads. That's the lighting on there is beautiful. You know, just... Loads of heads. You, William, you've gotten so much better. That, that's... I feel like I'm not doing enough, but um, yeah. definitely improving. It's good. It's got me cracking the whip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's where we're up to at the moment. Mm -hmm. so. Very nice. <clears throat> uh, you was a... really disrupted. The kind of a uh, like drive that I had, uh -huh. and then Helen Salandrad was an amazing replacement for that. And I feel uh -huh. like at this stage, I maybe need to do a bit more kind of like I've been doing a little bit of perspective acting. Um, mm, yes, and I think that that's I know what my weaknesses are, uh -huh. um, so it makes me guilty when I don't uh, make my strengths. And I think that's where I'm at at the moment is to do some more perspective because I think that would really help my drawing. We were doing a lot of life drawing, and Ahmed, you joined William done yeah. a life drawing with yeah. You. Yeah, with Hugo. So that, that was good fun. I Hugo remember Hugo. <laughs> maybe four nights a week of life drawing. And it's not that expensive in Glasgow, so you can do it that, which is nice that it's accessible. But I think yeah. we're also maybe putting off 
the fact that we'd said we'd do these comic projects and because we're so busy with Lifetron, you know? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. And obviously Lifetron is amazing. I mean, I love it. And there's nothing, there's no replacement for it. Currently at the moment, we're doing things like Lifetron via Zoom and things. And there's just no way that you're seeing any, any detail in the body because just webcam type stuff. So I think that's also what we're doing. Whereas when we had none of that, they closed down the restaurants, they closed down everything. Then all we had was 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 the hell, really, was the yeah. hell in Stalingrad. And I think mm. that really, really helped us. You know what I mean? Mm. So even if you were kind of like, time was elastic for me during the, the major part of the lockdown in Glasgow and Scotland. But even if it, if it wasn't working out on, on the early evening, you didn't have to go and do anything the next day, really. So. Yeah. You could kind of work into the night if you fancied and things like that and just keep on returning back to it and i think that's a good it's a good way of working in general and in fact i often feel like if, if you don't have any inspiration that you just start working you start drawing yeah. and then 10 minutes later you will have inspiration right, rather than waiting on this gorgeous idea to come and hit you you know what i mean sometimes you What's do that? have yeah <laughs> exactly sometimes you do have an idea in advance and that's cool or you've got a theme of things to work on but most of the time i'm sitting down like i'm just going to start drawing here because right i don't have anything quite yet but i'll yeah. come back so absolutely yeah the idea is that you, you sit down show up like a professional and, ev and eventually the muse or whatever genius kind of just shows up we do have a question from anon azure what's the hardest part in doing concept design so when you're doing this helen stalingrad Coming up with the different looks of the you know soldiers and the demons. What uh -huh. what was that process like? What was the hardest part about that? For me, anything that requires that that sort of level of brain power, I can call it that. Was I'm quite a, a morning person, which no. no one likes really. But <laughs> that's when I'm at my kind of uh, sort of most most powerful. So if I have to do that type of work, it's a case of just getting up and getting the coffee on, really. And I liked your technique. A couple mm. of weeks ago, maybe when you were doing your 45 minutes of warm up and things yeah. like that. You know? And when you tell people that you're doing quite a long warm up, I think they're thinking, but that's 45 minutes that I could be finishing off the drawing or something like that. But mm. you're really not in the zone until you've done that. So if I if I started that and I got like, that was cool, that was cool. And when we could meet, when William and I could meet either at mine or at his, then we could continue that process of we'll just warm up for quite a long time and just sort of shoot the shit a wee bit. And then at one point it kind of crystallizes, you're you know, yeah. you're, you're just like, oh yeah, this is, this is a step forward, you know? So I'd say in terms of doing concept, it's, it's lots and lots of iteration. I like hearing about some of the old concept guys for film and things where they've done like 900 craft, you know what I mean? And you think that's unbelievable, you know what I mean? Just 900 spacecraft or something like that. But right. over a period of a week and you think, but yeah, but that's in a real zone of True. Yeah, yeah. And then and getting your pal in as well to, you know, yeah. I mean, to, to do the other 450 or something like that, you know. And what about the research fun, aspect? You know, you know like, uh, did you gather uh, accurate references of, like, yeah, yeah okay, like, cool. I did a lot. Thousands, maybe, of images. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was a World War II period. Yeah. I went down to the Imperial War Museum in London. And oh, okay. Some, some ref of some of those uniforms and things like that. Some you legitimate know? research. Like, online stuff is amazing. I went to the libraries when they were opened, and because there's things in libraries that I've not made it online, and it's pretty old school. But on the other hand, I think you're kind of like a wee bit ahead of the game. And I'm a huge fan of people like John Paul Leon, who's famous for the Winter Men and uh, Earth X and things like that. And he was saying he just gathers an absolute ton of reference, a huge yeah. amount of reference. And I think that's good to hear that. You know, that it's it's not like a lightning bolt in your head that draws right. the stuff. Yeah. It's, it's quite a lot of teaching yourself. Yeah, these, and then by the end of it, yeah, you can draw uniforms from. I mean, that period things, mm. or weaponry, or or prop items, or things like that. You know, so I guess yeah. My answer to the, just from my side of things, uh, the hardest part for me is is like you said, sitting down, but then letting the thing happen. But um, is settling on something because there's a part of your brain that's always okay. What if? What about that design? What about this? And then it just spreads out into all these possibilities and the willingness to say, okay, this is it. I have to settle and move on. I think um, that's really difficult, especially when you compare it to existing work and it becomes like a, a battle in your mind. Um, in terms of maybe character design or something, then if you make a change later on, you're going to have to go back around and, and make that 
continuity for all mm. the other pages as well, you know. So yes. that's a nice sort of motivation to not make a major <laughs> character design change. Yeah. Yeah. When, like, you know, when you've had inspiration two thirds of the way through in the third act or something like that. And you're like, well, I would have to now go back through and make all of these changes. So in some respects, it's a practical thing where yeah. we settled, you know what I mean? And unless it's majorly inaccurate, then right. then I think it's okay to go, well, that's as far as we took it for yeah. that time period because we've got such a lot to do here, you know what I mean? Such a, a gargantuan task to to complete, really, you know? So we got a nice, nice kind of funny like, question mm-hmm. for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Did I, you... that. I could tell you, but I'd have to. Uh... <laughs> I think it's definitely. I mean, like the, the like real answer to that is, I guess, like sometimes we would pose uh, and draw another person, or like when you're drawing, I think a lot, a lot of people do this. You're consciously making the expression as you're drawing it mm-hmm. uh, and stuff like that. So there is definitely a bit of kind of like you know performance coming in while you're doing it, you mm-hmm. know, or like. Quite often when we're drawing the hands, you're like taking a hold of the uh-huh. hand and uh, like flipping it or expanding it and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So there was a bit of that kind of like yeah. become the demon sort of stuff. Not possession. No, no not, we're not, not pretending that, that we're, you know, I mean, that we've been, you know, uh, needing any sort of like exorcism. But I think embodiment, really, that's the, that's the, the sort of the, that's what happens when you're, when you're drawing up. Even for much more with this pro with this process that I felt like we've been a conduit for for the ideas rather than consciously making it all fucked up or something like that, you know. Mm. So well, we got a new question. Uh, mm-hmm. When do you think that your skills as an artist first really connected with your interests? Probably when I was making films, I guess, uh, which is now a long time ago. But I think to storyboard and do even just kind of like sketches of maybe what you want a set to look like and things yeah. like that. That's, I suppose, when I first ever started to draw uh, in terms of like things that I was actually interested in. Um, when I was at school, it was just a case of practicing and getting better. But I think when you've got a reason uh, to draw, that can really channel your focus. Certainly for me, it does. Mm-hmm. Right on. When did you start asking for you? For you? Um... I'm still waiting for it. <laughs> well, I think uh, I feel like I've I've spent so much time developing the foundations and skill sets, but um, only recently, in the maybe last five years, after even working professionally, um, have I let those skill sets start to tap into my actual interests. Um, you know, the willingness to go a little bit darker with my work, as opposed to the flashy, colorful cotton candy stuff. Um, which I, maybe an adult theme in some of your work as well. Potentially, yeah. Not entirely comfortable with sharing on like mainstream right. social media and things like that. Right, and right. I think we all do an element of that where you don't share the stuff that you know is going to get shut down or going to shut down your account. And it's a pity, you know what I mean? Because in yeah. some respects, social media is, is dictating what an artist is doing kind of thing. But it's, it's happening across the board. You know what I mean, I'm a big fan of Kim Jong Kim Jong Dee. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. How does he get a, away with all that? <laughs> Instagram. I mean, I don't know who isn't a fan, really. You know. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I started out really very, very young indeed with drawing, mm. and I didn't really have the like the distraction of of the net until later on, kind of thing. You know. So right. that was all all that I had to to concentrate on. So, and I think it's important just to kind of. I think there's a certain age where you, as a child, decide I can't draw like whomever, you know, and then you, you stop doing it rather than mm. if you can encourage kids to keep on drawing through that period, then by the time you get to like the age where you might re rediscover art again, you've already been drawing through that entire. I just entire wanted period. to, that's, that's an important kind of key point for me. It's yeah. just to keep on, keep on going. I just wanted to kind of address this question from Brian Norfleet. Are there any famous African-American artists who are famous? Sometimes I feel lonely in this industry. Absolutely, man. There's like a lot of uh, um, African-American, but not just American, but black artists in the UK. So if you check out um, Drawing While Black or on Twitter, there's, there's like this um, um, hashtag movement that says, hey, I exist. You know, it's really cool to see. And personally, yeah, someone mentioned Anthony Jones. Um, there's... If, and if you're Jeremiah, I follow Jeremiah on yeah. 
on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, I follow Alfonso Dunn as well. I know there's Alfonso, been a, yeah. a bit of kind of controversy with Inktober. Yeah, yeah. Moment, but yeah, I follow. One of my favorite. A long time. One of my uh, favorite I've comic books. Black artists over the years, a lot of black music artists as well. So, yeah, I think it's just it's a visibility thing sometimes. Eh? Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. There's Karen Karen Grant. Uh, he he was one of my more more uh, early influences. Um, did a lot of really great comics as well. Uh, but yeah, you just got to look. You're not lonely, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're, they're we have a lot. Of, I have a lot of diversity in comic mm -hmm. students, and it used to be even open. It was in person, and it, it's going ahead again in November over Zoom. I believe, unless things change dramatically by November, but I believe it's going to be next year before any major changes in this this sort of social distancing kind of thing. But I'm quite fortunate in Glasgow that we've got quite a mix. And they're also quite interested to come and do comics with us. So it's all ages, whatever, however you describe yourself, you're welcome to come and, and join in with us. And I think the question. And also, if you go drink and draw, it's free. And the kind of output that people are doing is diverse as well. I mean, with, with what the students consider comics, I find really interesting because it can be everything from like superhero stuff um, to more Japanese manga things. And then like Instagram comics seem to be. Mm -hmm you know, having an influence as well. So it's not what I expected necessarily. I thought it would just be like superheroes only, but it was more elaborate. Than that. What I do like about comic art is how direct it is, how you you condense a sequence of movements potentially into one frame. So it is animation. It's an animation art in that respect. And I think that's where it's been quite quite interesting for us to explore. How does this frame look? Can we make it even more? Is it possible for us to make it more, excuse me, dynamic or something like that? Mm. You know, that's that's what I'm quite interested in at the moment. I think this question would be for you guys. Mm -hmm. Give us uh, tips on paper stock for printing the graphic novel. Especially well, we with... wanted. I wanted. Pulp. I wanted absolute garbage. <laughs> nice. So okay. That's what I've grown up with now. With things yeah. like 2000 AD and mm. Commando comics as well. So we kind of. Because these comics were in local newspaper stores, essentially, you know, I mean, yeah. it wasn't easy for me to access things like Marvel or DC at the time. Uh, and when we did, it was all random. Was that like that for you? Yeah, Just like random yeah, things. Issues, yeah, yeah. You know, sex or whatever. And half it was like adverts for Twinkies that were in the same style <laughs> as Spider Man, you know? So, what's going on here? And that's you know? like totally like, don't even know what that is in the UK or didn't back then. So, I wanted pulp for this. And I think. I think we're going along those lines with you, but I trust Rob and Matt in terms of that sort of side of production. Rob is also doing the the lettering and and layout, so that was that was up to his judgment really with that. But we discussed mm. absolute nonsense for paper, you know. So we had that breakup, but I, I think the guys have maybe got something else. But they they've got their own publishing contacts. When I publish my own books, I like to publish them in Glasgow. So I can pop down and see the guys. Yes, and yes. How's it going? How's it going? Yeah. It's checking it's in. Just checking in rather yeah. than online. It's nice, but you sometimes have to wait on a proof getting sent out and it's a week back and mm. forth and things like that. So yeah, uh, we've got a couple of companies in bars for that kind of thing. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily go for coffee table book quality for a thing like this. Maybe yeah. for an art book. Kind of thing, you know, but oh, okay. something about the uh, what I really like at the moment is fully black and white yeah. comics, black and white editions. So I got uh, Seven to Eternity uh, by Jerome Opeña, and that was a black and white edition. And I think it's in, is it in French? I can't remember. So I can understand most of it. <laughs> uh, and then there was, a, there was a Creature of the Night. Back to John Paul Leon again, fully black and white as well. So, but that I think I might need to get that in French also, but that's okay. That's really great to hear. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to take on the next question. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll take maybe one or two more questions, wrap it up, and then uh, okay. we'll end the thing. Uh, do you think classical artists such as Da Vinci, Rembrandt, would how would they feel about digital art and streaming art? What, what are your guys' thoughts on that? I think they would embrace it yeah, massively. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they'd also embrace all the technology as well because they always did. Um, mm. 
they, they've always used lens technology. So we've always had things like camera obscura, where it's just basically yeah. a box, or when we could actually have lenses, they were using lenses to maybe project images and then do a wee bit of rotoscope way, way back. Uh, burnishing mirrors, convex, you know what I mean, type things, darkened room. And that, that explains why in the 15th century, suddenly everyone could paint because they were able to get a, a representation onto the canvas, lay in some of the proportions and then take time. So basically artists provided the, the chroma, the color in mm -hmm. those days. And it was later on when we, when like, we discovered that you can actually use chemicals to, to do that. But so for example, in the, maybe some of those sort of camera obscura or getting, getting a mirror, they, all, they also had a moving image in a darkened room oh. in that period as well. So they knew that film could exist in the 15th century. So, so yeah, in answer to the question, I think the, these guys would have, would have loved. I agree. Procreate. You know what I mean? And yeah. We, uh, we <laughs> da Vinci and Procreate. As well, you know, so yeah, I think it's of the same mentality. And if you're not keeping up with technology, I think you're, you're not really enjoying the possibilities. You know, right. moment, you know what I mean? And, and also as a, as a tool as well, a massively, powerful tool yeah it's just a tool mm -hmm. it's like there's times where you maybe have to go completely analog and use paper and pencil you know if you're on a train mm -hmm. and your phone runs out of battery or whatever but there are other times where if your pen runs out of ink you know and you've got your phone that's the way to do it and mm -hmm. when you start combining them that's where your drawing is going to improve uh, right. your development it's when you're using everything just as a tool rather mm -hmm. than a crutch which is what i think things can become when you come become comfortable being comfortable creatively is not necessarily a good thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, uh, the human nature is we have curiosity and that gets amplified if you're a creative person. Yeah. And so no matter the medium, I don't think these classic artists in the Renaissance or whatever would look at that and say, no, I'm a purist. I only use these. I think just the nature of, of, of the human mind is just like oh what is this oh let me try this and uh, you know there might be this idea that if it's digital it's cheating it's like no it's you're, you're still controlling what's happening Ahmed, it certainly doesn't paint itself you know I mean, yeah. these pictures yeah. do not paint themselves i wish they did sometimes mm. and there was a, a read a discussion on john singer Sargent and whether he used camera now it's known that the sergeant had a box brownie and the thing oh, that he didn't necessarily use the camera to to, you know what I mean, to project and that kind of thing. But they think he used the camera to actually frame the image and give himself a bit of an idea. And imagine the sort of the technology, the, the quality of the lens in those days. And yeah. those really nice blown out areas in costume that he does or details in the face and things like mm -hmm. that, that allowing certain other bits to kind of, I mean, maybe he's making all the decisions, but Lost edges, of course yeah. the discussion was that he did not have a camera. You know what I mean? That he wasn't cheating kind of thing, but he, he very much did have a camera. You know, so of course he would. You know, I mean, why not? Yeah. I mean, he was from a very, very successful artist indeed, and quite a well-connected family also. So you would, you would have these elements of, of technology. You know, so it's just like ubiquitous with our phones at the moment. You'd be silly not to have one. You know, I feel like with a comic, like from, from my point of view personally, like I'd, I'd cheat the whole thing if I could. You know, if there's yeah. a way where I can, like, you know, do rotoscoping or. Um, go back into my analog drawings and then paint over them uh, and procreate or whatever. Like, I'm not going to consider any of that cheating. Um, as long as the comic's good and the images and the words are telling that story the way that I want, it's getting an emotional connection. It's not cheating. Mm -hmm. um, it's being an effective storyteller. So I think there's snobbery um, to do with that kind of approach. And I just think it's silly. Yeah. Um, either you're getting an end result that you're happy with or you're not. That's the important part. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, Norman Rockwell, J.C. Leyendecker, they all use the reference. They, I mean, Rockwell would just project the, the image and trace onto his canvas. Uh, Drew Struzan as well, absolute master of a you know movie poster designer. Um, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And some, some artists had access to the to the Lucy, to the camera Lucy, but they said it was just too much hassle to set up. It was actually quicker to just kind of look at the reference, take a bunch of pictures yeah. and get something. And just, you know I mean? And then it goes someplace else as well once you've got confidence. But like I say, it doesn't compose itself really by any means. You know, it has to be, right. you've got to be making decisions and it's only an aspect. It's only a, like a tool really, you know, but really I would say 
just work on your drawing skills. Just keep on yeah. drawing. That's and the, then that then once you can tap into what's in your story. mind. Get yeah. it on paper to a certain extent that actually makes you feel this is really, really useful. Mm -hmm. so, right on. All right, so, so we've reached about an hour. Um, mm -hmm. I do want to ask one final question for you, a couple of questions for you guys. Um, so the Kickstarter for Stalingrad, Helen Stalingrad's, uh, it, it, it's uh, succeeded and it's pledged. Um, what about for people who missed that but still want a, a copy or will it be sent out in stores? What's I, the think, I think Rob and Matt are quite organized with additional copies. Okay. So watch the space. Yeah, essentially. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it'll be handled by Mad Robot and Marius. Okay. So unless you come and speak to us at some Appearances that we've got future, in the future PVC, for next yeah. year. All so right, that'd be great. Yeah, we like to draw live, mm -hmm. so we've got a bunch of things like that. Actually, so, yeah, yeah ready to go kind of thing, and some are booking today as well. So, well, maybe we can uh, do this again once it's uh, you know launched. Once it's cool to do so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to that as well. I'm Excellent. It'll save the arts in general, and particularly music. I really miss going to gigs, and we've got a complete ban on music at the moment in Scotland, so it's it's painful. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, so I'm missing that kind of thing. So, but I'm anyway, I'm hoping it. next year we get a vaccine, you know what I mean? Yeah. New ways of living. And uh, I feel for like a lot of the kids that I teach as well, you know what I mean? Because I think it hits them pretty hard as well, you know? Mm. So I'm looking forward to whatever comes in the, in the future. For sure. The new normality, whatever that might mean. Absolutely. Okay, and um, so before I talk about the the final giveaway thing thingamajig, is there any last words that you want to say to the audience? Um, this will be recorded and and posted later as well, so more people will hear. Um, make some comics. It's brilliant if you've never done it before. <laughs> um, there's so much resource available online. Um, start small. Just do, just do one and two page comics. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. oh. I managed to catch Gary Erskine, who's based in, I think he's based in Dundee. He's a well-established Scottish uh, comic artist. And he was given, a, he was given a, a workshop out in Rutherglen. I like going to these tiny comic cons because you get right up close to either maybe Frank Crowley, you know, Vincent, mm. or, or Gary kind of thing, just in a tiny space. It's nice to go to the huge ones, but it's also good to go to these tiny ones. But Gary was given a workshop and he was saying, make sure and have fun. And I had to remind myself yeah. of that kind of thing as well. So comics. Oh, for sure that that's a great thing to leave off at um and to everyone else uh, remember the uh, link to their kickstarter is in the description if you want to take a look at it um, follow that for more updates um, for when it's released also the giveaway uh, <coughs> excuse me the raffle will be going for uh, two more days and once that is um done we'll we're going to be i'll probably do another live stream or a video recording uh pressing the randomize button to see who wins it and then whoever wins it, I'll reach out to you and we'll get your information and you should be receiving a new XP Pen Innovator 16. Um, unfortunately, again, it can't be shipped to Middle East, Africa, South America, Mexico, or South Asia. Um, having said that, I think that pretty much wraps up this stream. So I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, thank you all for watching. Thanks for joining and be sure you're subscribed to the like button, hit the like bucket, the like button um, to help the algorithm, all that stuff. So uh, thank you, William and Russell, for joining me. And it's Excellent. been a really, really great talk. Uh, and goodbye to everyone else. Bye-bye. Bye now.